When you hear the words NFL MVP, there are several images that immediately flash through your mind. Tom Brady engineering game-winning drives, Patrick Mahomes throwing no-look passes, or Lamar Jackson forcing defenders to tackle shadows. Now try to imagine the MVP being given to someone like Justin Tucker or Harrison Butker. I mean, no disrespect to either of those guys, but the idea is laughable. Yes, they are some of the best in the league at what they do, but they're kickers. And kickers don't win MVPs. Unless you're Mark Mosley. Mark Mosley? Chances are you're unfamiliar with the name. Mosley is the man who did the impossible, winning the NFL's most prestigious regular season award while playing the position where guys get cut for having one bad week. So how in the world did a kicker from Laneville, Texas beat out a Hall of Fame QB who threw for nearly 3,000 yards in nine games and led the league in TDs? I'm Frank Smith, and this is the story of a kicker who did the impossible, a Clutch Point's original mini documentary. First, we have to lay out the parameters. The year is 1982. A gallon of gas would cost you around a buck fifty. Michael Jackson's Thriller was the hottest song in the world, and the 49ers had just come off their first of four Super Bowl victories that decade. Super Bowl 17 produced the highest rating CBS had ever seen for a sports event, and the NFL was quick to capitalize, signing a lucrative TV contract with CBS, NBC, and ABC. The contract would begin in the 1982 season. The NFLPA saw how much money was coming in and rightfully wanted a piece of the pie for themselves. They demanded a 55% revenue share and additional player benefits. When their demands were not met, the players went on strike. And for eight weeks, the American people were deprived of their Sunday afternoon ritual. The standoff finally ended as the owners caved to a five-year, $1.28 billion revenue sharing deal that also included a horde of other player benefits. But with nearly two months already gone, what did this mean for the rest of the NFL season? The league came to a conclusion that they would play a shortened nine game season and expand the playoffs from eight to 16 teams. This set the stage for the impossible to shift to the improbable. Mark Mosley was an 11 year NFL veteran straight toe kicker who looked like he was on his way out of the league. He made a meager 59% of his kicks in the previous two seasons. To make matters worse, the Redskins had just drafted kicker Dan Miller in the 11th round of the 1982 draft to replace Mosley. All signs pointed to Mosley being booted from DC faster than he could shank a kick. But Mosley was given a second life when Miller was cut from the team after missing two field goals in a preseason game. With his job now secured, Mosley didn't waste any time in proving to the Redskins they hadn't made a mistake. Prior to the strike, Mosley couldn't have been more clutch, going 6-for-6 six six on field goal attempts. This included a kick that sent the game against the rival Eagles into overtime. Mosley would follow up with a dagger to seal the game in OT. The layoff from the strike seemed to energize Mosley. He was nothing short of automatic in the coming weeks, going 5-for-5 five five against the Giants, Eagles, and Cowboys in the next three games. Still, no one was actually giving him MVP looks. Until Mosley went off in week 14. He scored all of Washington's points, single-handedly willing the Redskins to a 12-7 W. Mosley, still yet to miss a field goal in the season, followed up that performance by going 3-for-3 against the Giants the very next week and hitting another game winner. The kick broke Garo Yepremian's record for most consecutive field goals made while also clinching the Redskins' playoff berth, ending their six-year drought. The 346 overall pick in the 1970 draft had become Washington's clutchest and most important player. Mosley didn't miss a field goal until the last game of the season, which was a 28-0 blowout versus the Cardinals. The Redskins finished the season in first place in the NFC at 8-1. Mosley finished the season hitting 95% of his field goals, 27% above league average. The kicker recorded more points for Washington than any other player that season. Mosley was named the league's MVP the very next day. Obviously, the announcement wasn't met with unanimous approval. Many made the case for Chargers quarterback Dan Fouts, who led the league with 2,883 passing yards and finished tied for first in passing touchdowns with 17. Rookie Marcus Allen also got a good amount of consideration, leading the way in rushing touchdowns, yards from scrimmage, and finishing fourth in rushing yards. Even Mosley himself couldn't believe it. He claimed, when the NFL called me to tell me I'd won it, I was shocked beyond words. Ironically, Mosley went on to miss more kicks in the playoffs, three, than in the entire regular season, one. Still, the Redskins went on to dismantle the remaining teams on their way to capturing Super Bowl 17. Were the circumstances set up for an unorthodox MVP in an equally unorthodox season? 100%. But 
did mostly take advantage of every opportunity he had in order to win the award. Absolutely. Thank you guys for watching. I'm Frank Smith. Follow Clutch Points at Clutch Points. If you enjoyed it, you can find many more on our Facebook, YouTube, and IGTV. Thanks. Until next time.